presentation of Scoreboard Preseason Show featuring 2009 football teams in the Northwest Kansas League on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by Cornerstone Ag of Colby is your link to global marketing handling, shipping, and receiving grain for Kobe in all of Northwest Kansas. The foundation for farm marketing is Cornerstone Ag. Good luck to high school student athletes. Farm Credit of Western Kansas, providing financing and financial services for agriculture and agribusiness in Northwest Kansas. We urge you to support all schools in Northwest Kansas. Good luck to our high school student athletes for a successful fall season. Farm Credit of Western Kansas, financing ag for generations. Farm Implement and Supply Company Incorporated, specializing in New Holland tractors, combines, hay equipment, sales, parts, and service. With locations in Plainville and Kobe, we also offer Crestbuster, Great Plains, Sunflower, Rhino, and Lawn and Garden Equipment. We understand what it takes to keep Kansas agricultural producers going. Their success is our number one goal. Docs on Call of Kobe is available 24-7 with office hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Dr. Gary Slavens and staff take care of family medical needs from the newborn infant to the geriatric patient. Good luck, Kobe, and area high school student athletes. Frontier Ag Incorporated serves today's farmers with products, services, and market and news reports with 26 locations in nine Northwest Kansas counties. Frontier Ag provides seed, feed, fertilizer, chemical, and area application, fuel, grain, and offers service stations throughout the area. We support Northwest Kansas high school student athletes. Decatur County Title and Abstract, Oberlin. Ward Drugstore, Oberlin. Fredrickson Insurance, Oberlin. Welcome back to Smoky Hills Public Television's preseason Northwest Kansas League football coaches show. And J.D. Johnson, the head coach of the Oberlin Red Devils, joins us in the studio uh, today. And uh, coach, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. I uh, didn't get to see your team play last year. You're only, uh, what are you, in your second year as head coach of the Oberlin Red Devils. Uh, what are your thoughts about your first season in this league, first of all, uh, last year, and then what do you expect here? Well, coming from an eight-man football school, I was down south of Dodge doing eight-man, uh, came into a very tough league. Um, when I came up here, everybody told me, you're coming up to football country, and, and uh, we got in and we played, uh, some, we played Norton and St. Francis and Goodland, and, and this is, it's a real good league, and usually they have a pretty good team come out of it every year uh, to represent our, our league somewhere in the state's uh, playoff somewhere. Not to mention, I think you told me you played in your first year as coach at Oberlin Smith Center, is that right? No, we played Norton. You played Norton instead of Smith Center. Right. right. Well, you didn't have to play Smith Center. Yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, I know they've had them in the past uh, yeah, they have. playing them and stuff, and uh, but you know, that's a strong tradition school, and, and I don't think it's no matter what year you have to play them, they're always going to be prepared and ready and, and a good team. What kind of changes did you have to make as a coach coming from eight man and then coming into the 11 man ranks? Uh, was that a different, difficult adjustment for you coach? You know, people ask me that, but uh, it just gave me one more person to throw to and one more to help block. So uh, we, we threw the ball quite a bit and, uh, you know, just change up some of the pass routes and uh, the coverage things. But, uh, you know, for the most part, it wasn't that much a difference to me, I thought. What about numbers for your ball club this year? Uh, and I've talked to all the other coaches, and uh, your numbers uh, similar to that of Hoxie's and St. Francis and Oakley and uh, et cetera or not? Uh, last year, I think we ended up with 18 kids playing, and uh, this year we got 26 out. So uh, we increased quite a bit with our number of kids. Uh, we have eight seniors, eight juniors. Um, sophomore class, I think we have four and then six freshmen. So we got good leadership out of our uh, junior and seniors this year. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, who do you who do you really look to to lead your uh, ball club offensively and defensively? And most of the time, I guess it's seniors. Probably no different for you. Or yeah, um, our senior class. I got uh, returning uh, wide receiver Toby Peters at a led the league last year in receptions and uh, yards and uh, uh, had some high honors there. Um, and then uh, 
We've got some young juniors that uh, last year, you know, they had to play quite a bit with the numbers, and this year in the off season with the weight program and stuff, uh, we got pretty strong. Uh, we got a Dakota Soderland. He's going to be a big asset to us. We don't know where we're going to put him. He's worked so hard. He wants to play some running back, but uh, he played line for us last year, and so uh, we're kind of messing around with some stuff there with him. And um, but overall, that whole senior class and junior class worked hard. We had about 23 average every day for weights this summer, and I had about seven of them perfect attendance. So, you know, they all committed into the off-season program, which uh, I think we'll see payoffs this season. You have a perspective on how you think the league race will go, maybe, or not? You know, I think you always got to put, you know, St. Francis at the top. They've uh, kind of been there for the past few years until somebody knocks them off. Uh, you kind of got to put them there. And it's hard to judge, you know, the rest of the league. We go from 4A schools clear down to eight-man football in our league. So, uh, And we only play, I think, three league schools. And uh, we play a lot of the, uh, I think it's the Midwest Continent League. The, the or Mid something. Continent Mid League, Continent Osborne league. and some of those. We play uh, Osborne, Plainville, Trigo, and Norton. So four of our uh, uh, nine games are out of league. Norton and Oberlin used to have a big rivalry. It's kind of like Colby and Goodland had and etc. Is that still there do you think? I, I think the the rivalry is there but the uh, it hasn't been too competitive the past few years. Um, I know last year it started out pretty good and um, I think we went in at halftime 28-21 so you know the fight was still there for them uh, but I don't think it's been as competitive as it as what it's been in the past, but hopefully with this uh, next year and stuff, we, we go there and uh, kind of like to surprise them. And, uh, you know, looking at uh, the way the new districts and stuff, we might be playing them every year from here on out, so. Well, listen, thank you for uh, coming in and visiting with us a little bit about your team and about the season upcoming. Good luck to you. Appreciate it, thank you. All right, Coach Johnson visiting with us. Stay tuned, now we'll come back and visit with the new head coach of the St. Francis Indians right after this.